But they heard these words and they thought that it was an idle tale and they did not believe them. They heard the words and thought that it was an idle tale and they did not believe them. So I wonder this morning, not by a show of hands, how many of us actually believe it? I mean, think about it, really. Doesn't it seem just a little far-fetched? This whole story of this man who came to earth, took on our lot, Suffered, died on a cross, and then magically two days later is out of the tomb. Not exactly what you thought you were going to hear a pastor say on Easter morning, is it? But think about it for a moment. Isn't it just a little hard to swallow? Isn't it just a little hard to take? Do we actually believe it? As we read the gospel lessons this morning, we just read the gospel of Luke where the women go to the tomb, right? How many women are there? We don't actually know. There's three named and it says then the other women. So there's at least probably five because there's three named and it says then the others. So it's plural. So there's more than one. So there's more than four, but we don't know how many. And and the interesting part... The in, one of the interesting things to our lesson this morning is this whole rock thing, right? It says that as the women were going to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. Look back further in Luke at the at the the crucifixion story, and it doesn't say anything about a stone. There's no mention of any stones at all in the Gospel of Luke for the tomb until we get to the women coming to it in the morning. And the question that that arises from the stone being rolled back for the women in the morning as they're heading to the tomb, was the rock rolled away, was the stone rolled away so that Jesus could get out or so that the women could get in? There's just way too many questions to this story. And if we look at it and compare it to the other gospel lessons, none of them really match up. That's your homework for today. I told the 8 o'clock too they had to do this. So next week I'm going to give a quiz. Um, your homework for the day is... You laugh, huh? you wait. <laughs> your homework for today is to go home... She won't be here. Your homework for today is to go home and read all four resurrection narratives from all four Gospels. Because it is the one story that is in all four Gospels, right? The... The story of Monday, Thursday is in all four Gospels. It's different. The story of Good Friday is in all four Gospels. It's different. The story of the resurrection is in all four Gospels. And if you compare the details, you'll be struck by how many details there are in each stories that aren't in the other ones. It's like any witness to anything that happens, right? You ask four people what happened. If I did something up here and I ask four people later what I did, I'm going to get four different interpretations of it. So it makes it hard... To really grasp a hold of this. It makes it hard to make it something to believe. And here's what you're going to hear this morning that you never really thought you were going to hear. It's okay if you don't understand the resurrection. It's okay if it's hard for you to buy the fact that someone was born of a mother a long, long time ago. That God left his throne, came down to earth and was born of a mother without having... The, the ability to have a car seat or baby bottles or, or TV to watch while he was teething and all of these things. And grow up as a child and endure pain and suffering to be put on trial for you for crimes he didn't commit. To suffer under pain, to die on a cross, to be put in a tomb, to rise again. It's okay if you find all of that a little bit far-fetched. Because you know what? I can't give you any proof of it. It can't scientifically be proven. There's no proof that I can give you that all of this is true. I can tell you things that would make it seem true. And I can tell you things that would help you believe it. But that's just it. There's nothing that I can do to convince you that the resurrection actually happened. 
It all has to do with your own personal revelation and your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you see, that's what those women had. Those women went to that tomb in the morning. That rock was rolled away. They went in. They saw that Jesus wasn't there. And the the angels came to them. And rather than saying, do not be afraid. It's okay because he told you all of this was going to happen. The angels say, what in the world are you doing here looking for him? Why are you here looking for him here? Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? The, The simple answer the women could have gave is because that's what we're supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be here. We're supposed to be bringing these spices this morning because we couldn't prepare him before we, before the, before sunset hit when we took him off the cross. So we have to now take care of the body. <clears throat> we now have to use our spices and our ointments and we have to wrap up this body and prepare it the way that we're supposed to, the way we're supposed to lovingly care for our ancestors when they passed away. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But then these women see these men and they they say, remember what he told you. And they remembered. And at that point, they had a revelation, an epiphany that he told us all of this before and all of it is absolutely true. And they ran back and they told the disciples and the disciples said what? We don't believe you. Why? Why didn't they believe them? You guys can answer. You heard, the, you heard the answer last time. Why didn't they believe them? Because they're women. I mean, absolutely no offense by that right here, right now. <laughs> to any women in, in, in the congregation. But that's the case. Because women were lower than shepherds. And shepherds were not able to be witnesses in court in Jesus' day. Shepherds lied and they stole and they were just underhanded. They were, they were not good characterized people. They, they just, you, no one would trust them. And women were even below the shepherds. That's the way it was. But the, the thing you got to think about with that is if shepherds weren't able to be witnesses in court in that day, what do we think of Jesus as? A shepherd. Our shepherd. Think about that a little bit. But women were not trusted. And the word there that it says that, that it was that the disciples heard it and they thought that it was an idle tale. Idle tale is a very nice way to translate this word. This is the only time this word is ever used in the, any of the New Testaments. And it's a very nice way to translate this term. That, that the women told an idle tale. And the disciples didn't believe it. But if the disciples didn't believe it, why did Peter get up? Why did Peter go to the tomb and look in? Peter, the one who is now, who, who set up the succession of the popes in the Catholic Church. Right? The Catholic Church believes that the popes are direct descendants or have an apostolic succession from Peter. Peter got up, ran to the tomb, looked in, saw the cloth, and was amazed and went home. Peter, the rock on which the church is built. Didn't get it. And as a pastor, I'm telling you this morning that if Peter didn't get it, it's okay for us not to get it. And I'll tell you even further than that, there are times that I, myself, just don't get it. It doesn't make sense that God would leave his throne on high to come down to be born of a woman to suffer the way that he did for each and every one of us but you know what he loves each and every one of us so much that he did that and that is the point of easter and that is the point of paul's writing to the corinthians you see the corinthians didn't believe in the bodily resurrection for whatever reason they just didn't do it they didn't believe that christ rose from the dead in a bodily form but paul told them if this life for this if if for this life only we have hoped in Christ meaning the living Christ we are the most pitied people of all. If we only hope in Christ who died on that cross and laid in that tomb there is absolutely no hope. Our hope is in the risen Christ. Our hope is in the Christ that walked out of that tomb. Our hope is in the Christ that didn't need that stone rolled away because he would have come out of it regardless. Our hope is in Jesus who went to the cross and died 
and then two days later rose from the dead and ascended to God and someday is coming back for us. That is our hope. And we can't explain it. And it's okay for you to say, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But I still believe it. Because that's where I am. And that's the honest truth. There's times that we just don't understand how it happened. I don't understand how Jesus came from God, did all everything that he did, died and then rose again. I can't explain it to you. I can't make you believe it. But I believe it. And that's where my hope is. And that's what Paul told the Corinthians in chapter 15. And in those, and in those seven little verses, he said not only that when Jesus was rose from the dead, did God change Jesus' life forever, but God reclaimed all of the cosmos and changed every one of our lives forever. He changed every one of us long before we were ever here. Because that's how much he loves us. So it's okay not to get it. It's okay not to understand it. But believe that he died for you. Not for that person sitting next to you. He died for you and you alone. And if nobody else was here, he still would have done everything that he did for you. Because that's how much he loves each and every one of us. So go this day, on this most holy day where we proclaim, Christ is risen. Come on, they're not doing, they didn't do so hot this time, so... On this most holy of days, when we proclaim that Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Come on, it's like 1030, people. I've been up since 6 o'clock. Let's try this one more time. On this most holy of days, when we proclaim that Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Much better. On this day, when we proclaim that Christ is risen indeed. That we have had a sighting of Jesus and we have had a personal relationship with him. We can't explain how it is that he's risen. But the fact that he's alive is moving our lives and helping us to go out into the world to proclaim to them that Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And that is what we need to do to show that love to all of the world. The love that he gave to us. The love that he wants us to share.